Hello, so welcome again to another beautiful episode of Reaction on the channel. If you're meeting me for the first time, you're welcome to the channel. My name is Daniel and you're welcome to Daniel's Reacts. On this channel, we keep it cool, we keep it simple by reacting to musical videos of your favorite right that is. We talk about culture, we talk about talent, we talk about um, uh, places you haven't seen or haven't heard about and we tend to react to every piece of video on this channel. So what are you waiting for? What are you looking at? Do what to just smash the like button, turn on your post notification bell by subscribing and also do well to share our videos to your friends and loved ones. You know, someone out there will love what you say. So without talking too much from the title, you should know the description of the video. Like, you can't wait to watch it, right? The same way I can't wait to react to it. So what you just need to do is to grab your cup of popcorn, your juice and everything that we get to make your mouth bobbing and you get entertained so that you don't get to miss out on this beautiful episode of reaction so without talking too much we are wasting much of your time do well to engage on this particular one you can also support us by also super thanking super chatting and also you can see a link in the description where you can support us also by buying a coffee that way you can support the good work you see on youtube and you appreciate the reactor or the content creator of that particular piece of content so without talking too much let's dive into the video you came to watch so let's move it guys i just want to start off by saying that it's always great to be politically active than to not be politically active so i thank you for that um but i do want to start off by saying earlier i was outside protesting as i usually oh. do on campus with a sign that says tear the wow. fascists down now for those who don't know what fascism is it's an ideology associated with nazism as i had this sign not affiliated to anybody I had a group of individuals come up to me saying openly they were fascists attending your event and called me the F-word while, while I had it. It's not lies. Now, I am not here to call you a fascist. I'm not. As I know you're not a Nazi sympathizer, you've never openly sympathized wow. Nazism. I can see that. But people who openly call themselves fascists are here and are not afraid to admit they are fascists. So my question is, we denounce fascism today as the definition online puts it as an ideology including racial nationalism and authoritarianism today. Yes. Uh, will you denounce Marxism as the greatest killer of human beings in the last hundred years? Well, describe Marxism to me. Wow. I'm sorry, what? Describe Marxism to me. Okay. Uh, the ideology okay, that okay. Mao Zedong, Joseph Stalin, Vladimir Lenin, and Pol Pot employed to the massacre of our They did kill millions million. of people. You're right. Correct. Okay. So I'll denounce fascism. You denounce Marxism. Yeah? Well, I would have to say, like, by definition... No, 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 hold on, 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 hold on. So my thing is that, was it Marxism itself, or was it a materialistic condition that caused that? Because as Marxists, what we do say is that there's material conditions that contribute to society. Now, you probably aren't familiar with dialectical materialism, I'll try to explain it real quick. No, I, I've read the phenomenology of spirit, and I, I, I know Hegel, but okay. no, but... but but tell me, uh, so but why not denounce Marxism? I mean, Love what? This. So Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong uh. Marxist, Lenin Marxist, Joseph Stalin mm -hmm. Marxist. I'll denounce Joseph Stalin for you, definitely, yes. Joseph but, Stalin was an authoritarian leader who definitely killed millions of Ukrainians wow. during the export of grain to, of course, uh, build up their economy. But there's nothing about, you don't think there's anything about the ideology that leads to the suffering, impoverishing, or the murdering? Well, just like how Hitler called himself a socialist, it's not the ideology, it's just what you actually do at practice. Hmm. Yes, he did call himself a socialist, yeah. and, but he was not a Marxist. He was not, yeah. But he was, the National Socialist Workers' Party is the actual name of Nazism. But mm -hmm. where has Marxism ever worked? Well, I wouldn't say that Marxism itself has ever actually been tried. Now, of course, you can always say, like, oh, like, you know, that's an easy communist getaway question to it, right? Well, but Marxism has okay. killed a lot more people than Hitler. Everywhere it's tried, it results in famine, impoverishing, death, destruction, I mean, I mean, every failed country on the planet right now, including right. North Korea, is some form of a Marxist di dictatorship. Well, if, if, so why is it hard to denounce that? Because it's easier for me to denounce fascism. Hmm? Why, why the struggle to just say, you know, wow. Marxism, bad, evil, end this of story? Why can't we agree on that? Well, because if you look at, I'll give the example of North Korea. What we did is that we went in there during the Korean War and destroyed all their factories, right? Now, what did this lead? This left an impoverished society where they now had no means to, of course, get their needs because their factories were destroyed. So that's number one on why North Korea. Now, I don't like North Korea. I'm just saying that's one reason it has why. Has nothing to do with the Marxist no. leader? Nothing? He's so not a Marxist leader. I wouldn't consider himself a Marxist okay. leader. So what, what ideology is, is his? So the ideology of Marxism is simply that workers own the means of production. The workers in North Korea do not own the means of production. Well, do they have private property rights in North Korea? They don't. Then who owns the means of production? The government does. Oh, okay. Yeah, but in a Marxist society, no, but in a Marxist and that, society, that the would work be that would be m m m Marxism? No, it's not, because the workers own the means of production, not the government. But, but who is the government? 
The government is the people, the bureaucrats. Oh, the bureaucrats so wait. control the power. Okay, and that would be the people, the bureaucrats, own the means of production, otherwise known as Marxism? No. No, no, no. You're getting it all wrong. Literally, the word definition of Marxism is that workers own. Workers own the means of production. Right. So where has that ever been tried or worked? You say it's never been tried ever? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Got it. So even though the hammer and sickle mm -hmm. and core Marxist ideology has been invoked repeatedly by these leaders, mm -hmm. you're saying, no, 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 not a Marxist. No, 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 not a Marxist. No, 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 not a Marxist. It's just on, Over a hundred times it has been tried on every single continent from... Mugabe in Rhodesia, which became Zimbabwe, to parts of India, to China, to Korea, to parts of East, Eastern Europe, to Central and South America, to Venezuela. None of that is Marxist, even though they say they're Marxist. Well, it's temper, tempering with Marxism because you have sanctions and you bomb their countries. So, I mean, if you want to call that Marxism, then if you sanction and bomb them, I guess that's Marxism. Wait, so w how have we sanctioned and bombed these marks? Like, like Venezuela? Like Venice, Venezuela has sanctions to where we don't buy their oil anymore. Yeah, wh why do you oh. think we're sanctioning them? Because they wow. have Marxist ideologies that don't incorporate with capitalist hmm. ideology. Well, yeah, yeah, they're also like a quasi-terror state. But let's talk about Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Venezuela used to be rich and prosperous when they had the private ownership of minerals. Mm -hmm. Why is Venezuela now one of the poorest countries in South America? What ideology caused that? See, but that's the thing, though. It's not the ideology, it's the practice. Now, you could say the practice is Marxism, but again, do the workers own wow. the means of production in that country? Somebody does. Yeah, somebody does, but not the workers. Yeah, the government, so then, the government owns. So, I mean, in like the purest form of Das Kapital Marxism, mm -hmm. it is the government that comes in and abolishes private property. Correct? This is, of course, called the, I think, the dictatorship of the proletariat, I think is what you're referring to. Right. So yeah. you, let me ask you a question. So you believe in this like wow. abstract Marxism that you don't okay. ever want to okay. denounce, okay. even though it's been tried a hundred times. But if again, you say try, but we just said that it hasn't been tried because workers haven't owned a means of production. Okay. Well, why do you think that is? Because they use the swan song of Marxism, and Marxism will always result in an oligarchy or a dictatorship. Okay. Because you know why? It's impossible to quote unquote have the workers owns the means of production because we don't share well as human beings. That's why only someone that has, and with all possible due respect, an infant understanding of human nature can think communism can work because we're self-interested at our core. I love this. And you have an economic system that is built not on private property but on quote unquote shared goods. You're going to have a dictator on top of it that is going to exploit and terrorize. And so you started this conversation by asking me to denounce fascism, which is responsible for about 10 to 15 million deaths, said ideology. I'm pleading you one more time to denounce Marxism sure. that is responsible for minimum 100 to 120 million deaths. Okay, academics have proven that wrong. That's not true. That's from the Black Book of Communism. That has How many people did Mao kill? Mao killed about 30 to 40 million. Oh, how many people did Stalin kill? Stalin killed about 20 to 30 million. Okay, now we're at like 60 million, and I just yeah. named like two countries, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like, we're out of the gate, and we're at like 60 million. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I can keep on going, right, if you want to talk famine, impoverishing, lowering of standard of living. But I, what I, what I want to just reiterate as we close this out, there's this pathological fascination with fascism, fascism, fascism and a complete ignoring that wow. Marxism, which is the other side of the authoritarian blow. coin, has been far deadlier, far more costly, and is far more popular. And I'll ask this final question. What do you think has a greater chance of catching on in America, fascism or Marxism? I would say fascism. Okay. You really think so? I really do believe that. Okay. The only way I would possibly agree with that is the left-wing fascists that shut up people on campuses and allow, you know, try to stop freedom of speech. But what is just, I, 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 I'm, I'm perplexed by your position and your inability and your unwillingness to denounce, denounce Marxism. I don't know how many, I mean, another hundred million people dead. Maybe you'd change your mind. Thank you. Thanks. I just was curious about your stance on like college is a scam. Yeah. And I just was curious, uh, you know why you say that? Let me prove it to you. How many of you have to take classes that are a waste of time that you wish you shouldn't have to take? Well, there you go. Yes. I rest my case. Yeah, no. How many of you guys know at least three people that dropped out that went to this college previously and earlier? Okay. The national graduation rate is 41%. Most people that go to college do not graduate. You guys actually go to a school that has 
a lot of applicability in the job market outside of some of the majors that are offered, but aeronautical engineering, computer engineering, um, which, you know, go, go work for Elon. Uh, and, but, so this, this school is actually a little bit more of the exception than it is the rule, because uh, I think humanities are largely one of the great wastes of time and kind of societal poisons and cancers that are happening in our society. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to continue. So yeah, but, yeah, so what do you recommend, like an 18-year-old dude or a girl, um, to do after high school? Um, yeah. Turn up the volume. Yeah. Th I, yeah. Can we try? Uh, I apologize. Sorry. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to try. And I will come out there and say hi to you guys in a second. So, um, yeah. And we're going to go say hi to all of our friends over there. Um, so, yeah. What, what, do I, what do I recommend? It, it all depends on what you want to do. That's the most. The, the worst thing oh. you can do is enter into a four year. Wow. Um, a four year agreement mm -hmm. where you have to borrow a bunch of money, try to find your way. Go take a bunch of classes that have very little relevancy, and next thing you know, you end up with a college degree, and you end up getting a job that doesn't require a college degree. Here's a fact. Half of people that graduate college end up getting a job that does not require a college degree 10 years after they graduate. That, that is the best argument wow. I have. It For goes sure. to show the diploma doesn't actually have... Yeah, I mean I mean, you're looking at engineering students. You're looking at you know. Well, engineering's different. There's you a, know finance students. I, I, I qualified and, and that. Students yeah. like that. For example, I went to community college for two years, and um, you know a lot of other people go to community college. You get free community college for two years, then you could transfer over, uh, and then two years at a at a college like Cal Poly or a, you know a university, and you know wow. the top five paying to, okay. you know, okay. jobs at a college okay. are accountants, engineers, right. uh, teachers. Try to get closer to the mic so people can you know, hear. Yeah teachers, yep. engineers, stuff like that. And it's just, you know, and then the, the, the guys, the people that are wearing the shirts are actually in college. So it, I'm just curious, like, but you know. They, they know better than I do that it's a scam then. I mean, it's just someone like me, you know, I think it just comes down to hard work ethic, you know. No, like, I, I, I don't understand, like, not everyone's built for the trades. Not everyone's built to go into construction or, you know, work as a painter or whatever they're sure. doing after college. Or a mechanic. Sure. Yeah, exactly, you know. Very I, love I just, you know, a large majority of people going into college out of high school, I think it's a good choice for, for kids because they have four years to develop as a human being versus wow. just jumping into the workforce well, th that, that's and, a good making, and, making, and making, what, 30, 40 grand, and you can't live off that right now. I mean, are those folks over there developing as human beings? I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking about them. But hold on. I'm talking about, you know. That's the, what college produces, though. Mm. Angry, bitter, resentful activists that hate the country. Yeah. That's not developing. That's hardening. And honestly, creating you know a mobilization army for the radical left—that's what we've seen. You got your your major courses where you're taking. You know, I'm a real estate finance major, so I'm taking classes for real estate finance. I have internships in real estate finance. It's great. I'm, I'm not going into that field after college, but I'm saying you take classes at college to get a job after college. And there's a most of the universities you get over 75 grand a year out of college. And if you do the route of two years at community college and transfer into a into a university. Yep. You're able to pay off that debt, which is around 20k, 30k, for a school like <laughs> wow. this. You can go to state school, and then you're off to the races. If so you I, graduate, I just, 41 percent don't, so because they shouldn't have gone in the first place. I mean, then, then what do they do? I mean, what do you do? They after never should have gone. I mean, yeah, we have 11 million open trade jobs in this country. Yeah, here, so here's the here's the thing: people do not want to work with their hands, yeah. and parents don't want to send their kids to go work with their hands because it's considered to be dirty type labor. Well, 11 million job openings in this country that require just a six month certification, uh, whether it be auto mechanic, right, HVAC, plumber, so on and so yeah. forth. And it's not for everybody. But no, I mean, I get what you're saying. It's just like large majority of people in America right now don't are just lazy. They're not going to be doing that after, well, after we, high school. We, well, we agree. So does college make you lazy or work, make you work harder? Makes you work harder. I mean, I worked throughout college. I worked. You school. are the exception then. I mean, um, because employers are disagreeing. They say we've never seen such lazy, entitled, narcissistic college graduates. In fact, most employers say if you have a college degree, you're put in a different category. They prefer people out of high school, unless you want to go work for Bank of America in a soulless laptop job for the rest of your life and, yeah. you know, go learn about how men can become pregnant at some HR, you know, <laughs> department survey. You know, or, you, or you use your analytical skills that you use in school to get a job that or you, six figures. You don't, you can develop analytical schools outside of college. I think I think you're just. I'm living proof I think, of that. I think you're just. I, yeah, I mean, I almost dropped out too. And and, 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 but and I'm not saying it wasn't it wasn't no. the right choice for you, but more times than not, kids are deceived and lied, and they have 
tons of animosity because this school is unique. If you go to UCLA or if you go to UC Berkeley, you're not left with $30,000 in debt. No, you're no. left with $130,000 yeah. in debt, right? Not if you do the two-year community so college. The, again, I, I preface this school is a little different, but appreciate the thought. Thanks, man. Hey, Kirk. Um, my question is sort of a question slash compliment. Um, you're a very good public speaker. And I think a lot of people here might struggle Whoa. with that. Um, wow. What I'm curious is somebody with hmm. so little education beyond high school and, you know, just experience in the field, how are you able to so confidently um, just kind of word vomit, right? <laughs> you've said a, pretty much every question you've answered has been wow. no answer. You've just kind of said what conservatives want to hear. So really all of your work is not a debate. It's just confirmation bias. So what you learn how to, what, sorry? You want a debate? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm just curious where you learned. <laughs> You sure? Where you learned how to public I, I'm speak. I'm a high school graduate. You're in college, man. Let's debate. I, I vomit for a living, you said. Yeah. Come on, let's debate. Wow. No, I'm not here to debate. That's not, no, you're that's just not my to, question. You're just here to insult me. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, you're a bad... Yeah, I am. You're okay. a hero. Where did you learn how to public speak? Because you're really good at lying out of your uh, what, what have I lied about? Name one thing I lied tonight about. The name a stats. Name, name a second thing. No, name a stat. I said that's wrong. Uh, you did said 11 million jobs. Uh, you said 50 percent. Yes, of 11 room. million jobs are so, open for blue collar work, according to Mike Rowe, and according to three independent studies, according to Department of Labor. Name another stat I said that's wrong. I guess my main point. No, is name a third stat that I said you, that's wrong. When you say a stat, or you just say numbers, <laughs> it's helpful really usually when you're public speaking to say where you got that information, because really? people who disagree with you might not. I, I, oh, think so you're so credible. give me no, but you, you, you say, give some examples. Where did I lie or say a stat that's not true? Wow. You need to work on not doing confirmation bias. Wait, hold on. No, but you come up here and say, oh, how did you with a high school education learn to spew BS? Say one thing I said that was wrong, misleading, unfactual, not Dude, rooted in data. One you're thing. You're doing it right now. I'm asking you a question. I was just making a comment, and you're spinning it. That's what you're really good at. That's why I think you're a good No, you came speaker. up here and insulted me. I'm asking you, how have I misled this audience? And you come unprepared, like not with a single data. I thought you'd at least have like one gotcha, man. Like one number, like one thing, okay. 11 million job openings, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, that require muscular labor and require just a six-month technical training degree. That is true. At the apex, 15,000 people sure. coming across the southern border every single day. I even said it's down a little bit. That is true. What, what, what have I said that's incorrect? <laughs> wow. This is mind-blowing. You're good at what you do, but not for the right reasons. That's all I'm saying. They don't want to debate me because they can't debate me. They can't say one thing I said that's wrong. They can't name one data point. They just come up here and insult. You, my friend, are why we are going to beat you guys historically because you are afraid to have a debate. Just, it's so amazing, the smugness. Uh, how'd you learn to speak like this in word vomit? Oh, what I say that's true? Uh, Everything. Name one thing. Name another thing. Name another thing. Yeah, you, sh you should ask for money back at KU. They're really scamming you, man. You'd think you'd have one little thing. All right. You create a company that's like, like close to being a fascist, and then like. Okay. Well, how am I? Sorry. Let, let's go through this. How am I a fascist? No. Dude, like you can, you. can you name one thing I believe that's fascist? Um, you believe that like, you are. But I'm I just such a okay. bad fascist, I let the people who disagree just, in open mic to talk to me for two hours uninterrupted. Just, okay. I'm okay. an awful fascist. I'm more like a free speech liberal of the 1970s, not a fascist. But I just want to say Turning Point USA is a evil company that was funded by thousands of fracking companies and that well, just... You know, it, it's, it's not thousands, but we do have some frackers that give us money. But Yeah, have, and then we, we all, have, all it is is making the rich from more... Fascist. Rich. Fascism to fracking. That's but, all it is. That's all it is. Okay, again, I'm happy to have a debate. I can see you're getting kind of fired up. I'm sorry. So, but what, why, why are we evil? Like, we're, we're having a nice discussion. Because all of a sudden, you you're, want, I you're calling me like, Because a it fascist. seems like you just want the rich get even more rich. Like, we, we haven't talked about the rich at all. 
I mean, oh. so do you, you don't even know my positions wow. on this stuff at all. The wealthiest people absent Elon Musk are all on the left. Jeff Bezos, George Soros, Mark Benioff, mm -hmm. Mark Elon Zuckerberg, Lorene Powell Jobs. On the left, yes. Expl can you name one tech CEO outside of Elon Musk that is a conservative? Um, I personally think... Let me think. Peter Thiel? Yeah, that's one. Wow. That's one. Um, Larry Page, Google, on the left, worth $120 billion. Sergey Brin, Google, $130 billion on the left. If, Lorene, okay. Lorene if Powell Jobs, Mackenzie Bezos, Jeff Bezos. If they're on the left, what has they done that was, like, quote-unquote, to do the left stuff? Well, okay, so Larry Page gives money to left-wing NGOs all the time. Like, if you're on the left, I don't think you will ever be this wow. rich. Well, they are. You know why? Okay. Because the but left because is, they're not. No, no because the they're thing, not. The left is a scam. The left uses. How is this? Let me tell you why. It's a good question, actually. The left uses people like you that think that oh, we're gonna fight the rich. Well, they protect their oligarchy. While you guys have to keep on working hard and never own anything. When we conservatives are the ones that actually want to restore the American middle class and bring jobs back to this country. How would you restore? Hold, let me finish. Let me finish. The, the left uses people like you every day. Who is funding? Do I have never seen okay. a leftist? Again, organization come to campus spreading their propagandas. Well, because the whole university is a leftist organization. No, it's spreading not. Propaganda. It's liberal. Left. Okay. There's a there yeah, is but, a clear cut difference but, between but a it, leftist and a liberal. Please you're, make you're that You're coming right. after this in a good way because every major powerful wealthy person in the country, over a hundred billion dollars in net worth, with the exception of one person, Elon Musk, is on the cultural left and gives money to the left. And you guys give them a free pass. Because you think that we're fascists, when in reality, we're the ones that are actually fighting to destroy the oligarchy the most. All right, last question. Last point. Yeah. Last point. Um, let's say, so you do want to fight for the American middle class. And that, that's how, my, yes. Okay, no, that's how, my, how, how, how does free, freer to market, like, helps with the well, middle again, class? Again, I, I want, I want precision in free markets, but I... How want, does uh, how does free market support the middle class? Again, I'm not puritanical, but I think that generally more choices are a good right. thing. I think that generally supporting entrepreneurs is positive, but I, I think that mass immigration is really bad for American workers. There's no mass immigration. Well, well first wow. of all, how many people are? Oh, wow, um, like, well, you're right. What, there there mass? is mass invasion, but um, but. How, how many people are coming across the southern border every day? Yeah, I don't know, but like, I don't know. It's I'm not actually generally curious. Can you guess? Okay. Um, on what time frame? Every day. Every day. Five hundred. Yeah, it's it's at its low point. It's at ten thousand right now. It was fifteen thousand last month. So what is that annualized? <laughs> Let's play that out. A lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, so that's mass immigration, right? How many green cards do we give out every year? Probably a lot. Yeah, a lot. About yeah. 1.2 million. Well, right? what's wrong with giving out green cards? Nothing wrong. No, you okay. said there's no mass migration. So I'm just okay. trying to tell you, we do have mass migration, okay. right? We have three million on the southern border, and then we have a million green cards, mm -hmm. right? That's four million a year, right? Which is effect basically bigger than most U.S. states. Now, everything comes with a cost. When you have mass migration, you're going to get lower wages. But that means you're going to disenfranchise American workers. What are you studying computer science? Yeah, I am. Okay, so you're an American born, I'm guessing, American raised. I don't I don't want to I wasn't, but Okay. I moved to the US. Okay. Well, you're an American now, I guess. I don't know, maybe yeah, are you I a am. student visa? Okay. You're going to ha now have to compete. Uh, you're kind of proving my point, but that's a separate issue. You're now going to have to compete against foreign labor for your computer science jobs. I think we have a moral obligation to American born workers wow. to give them preference and priority and restrict the labor supply so that our computer science majors can have higher wages, not to have suppressed wages so some tech CEO can uh, bring in a bunch of Indians and suppress their, no, nothing against Indians, but just you know, bring down their wages. Personally, I just think that like, if you came to America and then receive a green card, I think you get, you get to work however you want. Like, okay, I, yeah, think, I, I, think I think that American-born citizens should be And then there shouldn't be a priority because they're American citizens. Well, that, that's, as long what, as you're that's where we're different. Citizen. I actually think you must have a priority to your own citizens or else you don't have a government. You have something else. If you don't have a priority to your own people, wow. I don't know what you have. You have a colony, not a country. You're just a big economy. Mm -hmm. and, that, that, and that's fine if that's your position. By the way, your position is held by the ruling elite where I think that we should have a country, not just a colony, where the American-born citizens should be given preference over foreigners. Nothing against foreigners. I think they're nice people, but 
the Americans should be given first preference. And by the way, any sane country believes wow. that. We're like the only country in the world that says, and certain European countries, come on in and take whatever you want. I saw some people with the shirt that says, school, college is a scam. It's, a, it's quite the, the statement. And could you elaborate a little bit more on that? Do you believe college is, is a scam? Yeah, uh, half this audience, uh, if you guys get a job, will end up getting a job that doesn't require a college degree. Okay. Then, so they, we get a job that requires a college degree. Wow. So, okay. yeah, so any okay. business that has a 50% rate of a customer being scammed will be shut down by the federal government for disenfranchising their customers. You went to Chili's, like, hey, 50% chance that our fries are going to give you food poisoning. So if you look at college more than just getting a job, but more as a educating the population, would you say that's a scam? Well, it depends on what you think college is and what it's become. Secondly, 41% of people that enter college don't graduate. The dropout rate's insanely high. That's true. Third, I mean, what exactly is being taught here? It's a great question. I mean, are you learning about the beauty of Western civilization and reading the Federalist sure. Papers of Hamilton and Madison and Jay? And do you get a positive view of America or do you spend time on postmodernism of Michel Foucault and Jacques Derrida and Gene Stefanik and Derek Bell? I'd uh, say more networking. Oh, networking. Yeah. Okay. So hey, wait, 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 before we go dive deep into it, what's your definition of a scam? Uh, where a, a serious proportion of your customers are not given the value proposition that they pay for. Education, right. Which they're not getting. Yeah. You're right. saying, so therefore... And well, that's the question. You come here to get uh, educated, you guys are going from the wrong thing. This is just a glorified credentialing exercise. Yeah, and that's what you're paying for, but therefore it's oh, not... okay, so, uh, so we're not, it's not education. You're just paying for a piece of paper so you can get a job. And education, I mean... Oh, is it education? So are, are you, It is education, sorry. But education, I'll, I'll, I'll what, does that even, what does that mean to you? Um, okay. Resources, learning how to work, learning how um, to um, move around a professional workforce. Um, you need to go to that, college to learn that. Yes, yes, I'd say. I so. think you're being you're being scammed, man. I don't, Take it from someone who didn't go to college. You don't need any wow. of that stuff. Yeah. You would, need, you, would you say a doctor would need a college degree? Well, of course, but that, the vast majority of kids here aren't studied to go to, to become a doctor. How many engineers are in here? Yeah. Okay. So, how many people that are studying so social or liberal sciences? Social sciences. Woo. Yeah, fair amount. Okay. okay. It's a personal choice. Therefore, the vast majority of kids that go to college are social sciences, psychology, communications. Mm -hmm. About only eighteen to twenty percent are studying engineering. And you say they shouldn't go to college. Well, it all depends. Again, it depends on what you're studying, exactly. why you're there. But you don't. Uh, this idea that engineering, you need a four-year degree. You could also just learn to code in six months and work for Salesforce and earn one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Exactly. It's, uh, it's yes, it is true. They, 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 you have to go to college to learn to code? Okay, that's my point. I'm not saying it's easy, you just need to go to college. Secondly, what does a manager of a Walmart, a Walmart Supercenter make a year? Anybody know? It's $400,000 a year. $400,000? Yeah, they don't require, yeah, you guys should just go become a manager of a Walmart, it doesn't require a college degree. What does the average plumber make in Scottsdale, Arizona? $115,000 a year. What does the average HVAC technician make in Henderson, Nevada? $75,000 a year. But those don't require college degrees. There are 11 million job openings in this country right now that don't require college degrees. We are oversupplying college. But yet you're here taking advantage of college and college students. Am I taking advantage? Is that what I'm doing? You're taking advantage of the space, I'm taking advantage of the students, not in a way of like, yeah, intellectually I mean, taking advantage. It, it's it's um, like it's like going to a place to tell people you're being scammed. If you call that taking advantage, then so be it. Yeah, I, I mean, you're taking advantage as you're taking my time, you're taking everyone's time, well, and you're you're, and, and you're, you're you're volunteering your time it, too. It, it, I didn't force you. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. We're, we're, you're taking okay. our time. We're, we're, we're investing enough. our time. I, I do this also in other places than campuses too. So. Yeah, no, but, but then you're here and then you're saying college is a scam. It is. Uh, okay. Half I, of you I, guys I, will end up getting a job where your entire college debt burden means nothing. Yeah. You will get a job that does not require a college degree at all. You're four years wow. wasted. You shouldn't have come here in the first place. Half. Yeah. Well, I disagree with you. And all right. Well, that's fair. I cool. hope you. I hope it's worth have it. Have a wonderful hope, day. All right. Thank you. What exactly do you mean by college is a scam? Um, good question. I wrote a whole book about it. Uh, largely, the value proposition that you are being offered is not worth the time or the money that many of you are forking over. There's exceptions to that generally, but wow. uh, for example, the vast majority of students that graduate from four-year college, uh, they'll end up getting a job if they get a job at all in a, uh, in a career or a job that doesn't require a college degree. So henceforth asking the question, why do they go to college in the first place? Okay, now what do you mean about uh, jobs that don't require a college degree? Like working at Starbucks as a barista. 
Okay. Uh, wow. So. Okay. okay what exactly okay. Uh, do you mean by uh, the value proposition not being sufficient for the uh, cost of going to college? Yeah. So I mean, going thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars into debt—that's uh, a significant thing, and. Hopefully, if you're going to do that, uh, you're going to be able to prove and have some value uh, for that for that reason. So, for example, there was a study that just came out in the last day, the 16 lowest paying job majors. Um, and the vast majority of those are actually what kids study in college, right? Communications, liberal hmm. arts, things of that nature. Very and so the question is, why even go to college at all if you're just basically getting a credential that is worth less and less money in the marketplace? Now, if you study engineering, if you study finance, terrific but wow. the scam also is just beyond the financial value proposition it's um, the ideological pollutants that are spread on college campuses and the uh, let's just say some of the left-wing indoctrination that occurs here as well okay so hmm. moving aside from uh, that red herring there uh, I point? myself okay. am a uh, communication major and uh, I am very well aware of the uh, communication majors who just take a four-year degree and uh, go into jobs that d either don't require a degree or... Try to get as close to the microphone, okay. Is that okay? Thank you. It's okay. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I'm aware of the communication majors who only get a bachelor's degree and sure. if they're lucky, they're only able to get research assistant jobs in communication or not even get a job that requires a uh, degree at all. Wow. But would not those who uh, continue on to get masters and doctorates in communication who get hundreds, uh, who get a $100,000 a year or $200,000 a year uh, research jobs, would that not counteract uh, the total economic, uh, socioeconomic value of those who just go into college and then end up Starbucks baristas? Uh, potentially, yeah, I mean, also master's degrees are expensive, right? PhDs are expensive, so you're looking at least at $150,000 to $200,000 in debt, minimum, uh, if you're gonna do that. And if that's, if that's the path you wanna take, so be it. But there are 11 million job openings in the country right now that pay $80,000 or more that don't require a college degree. 11 million job openings. And I don't think we're always telling our young people, you know, the next generation that these jobs are available to you. It's an, it's an expectation that you go to four-year college. And in fact, you're treated and almost considered to be dumb if you don't go to four-year university. And I think that's a big mistake. And not to mention the vast majority, 41% of kids that enter college do not graduate. There, there's something deeply wrong with the system. So, so from what you're telling me, yeah, though, final point. Yeah, from, uh, really from what you're telling me, though, it sounds more like... Uh, the problem lies not in uh, college itself, but rather the individual paths that people choose who look at a situation, make the wrong decisions, don't stay in school as long as they uh, need to in order to get the career that they want. Or they drop out because they don't see the value. They drop out because they don't think it's worth their time. And again, half of this audience, after 10 years, if they get a job, they'll end up getting a job that didn't require them going to college in the first place. Half. That sounds like a scam. Why are they here in the first place? Why are they borrowing all this money and spending four years on a university just to go get a job that never would have required them to get the degree or the debt or the four years being spent on campus? Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh. I want you to take on immigration. Wow. What do you feel about illegal immigration, mm. you know, border hopping, border patrol? What do you take on that? Do you believe? Um, I mean, obviously I know like somewhat what you're It shouldn't you're, be a mystery, my yeah, beliefs, obviously. But, yeah. but I want to like hear from you first. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you're in this country illegally, you should be deported. Okay. And uh, we should also restrict the amount of legal immigrants coming into this country as well. Okay. But the illegal problem is a much bigger problem right now. It's, it's, it's a full-out invasion. We have 15,000 people wow. a day marching into our country. We don't know who they are. Terrorist watch lists. They're killing people every day. Lake and Riley, another 16-year-old in Texas was just murdered over the weekend by an illegal. So you believe that everyone, no matter what you've done, deserves to get deported even if they're illegal? What if they just do well, nothing and contribute to society? Well, you can the, contribute the, to society. Well, they didn't do no, Hold on. Legal, they, didn't do, they didn't do nothing. They broke into our home. Okay. But like, what so if, if you break into somebody's home, you should be able to get kicked out of the home. Wow. So they know what they did. They okay. trespassed. They domiciled okay. themselves okay. illegally. If that continues, go back to your country of origin and go be a dreamer in Nicaragua. <laughs> but a lot of times it's because of U U.S.'s imperialistic past is what caused many of these nations to... Oh, can you hear me? U.S. imperialism in the past? Yeah, a lot of these countries have been de devastated by... by okay, so there's over 120 different countries okay. that are coming across the border. Uzbekistan... 
Ch you know where 155,000 people from China have come across the border this year? Okay. From China. That's not like U.S. imperialism in Honduras. So they should be kicked out and deported. Sure. And it doesn't matter. U.S. imperial. I'm going to roll my eyes at the whole thing. Oh, still broke the law. You came into our country illegally. We have laws and customs. You came here. You knew you were breaking the law. And you should be sent back to your country of origin. Any okay. decent country would do that. So you're taking a subset of Chinese citizens or Chinese people from China and saying, grouping them with everyone else. And because well, no, we I think I think the China Hondurans, in the Mexicans, Nicaraguans, El Salvadorians, Panamanians, Venezuelans, Chileans, they should all go mm. home. Oh, really? If they're here illegally, yes. But like I said before, these people have been devastated by in the past. These countries are poor. I, I don't care. Like go, go <laughs> really? fix your own country. How do we screw up El Salvador? No, no. Tell me, how did we screw up El Salvador? Can anyone tell me? Okay. Or is that just a talking point? What about for the kids? Go if back to your here? country of origin. So you would tell me to go back to my country? Well, right now? are you born here or not? I'm born here. Well, my I think we should not. get they rid of illegal. birthright citizenship, sure. but technically we have it, so me. you should stay. But yes. But I'm contributing to society. I'm working. Okay, good for you. I mean, I, so again, I, I would. I think we should get rid of birthright citizenship. Oh, but, so I'm done. Wow. But I'm done again, I'm not like I'm not like king, so we don't get rid. But birthright citizenship is a misreading of the birthright cause in the U.S. Constitution. But we have it, so you should, you're going to stay. Don't worry. Okay. But you want me gone. But are, do, You want me gone. Well, no, I don't want you. I want you the law to like be enforced. Again, I think you're a nice person, but me I don't too. allow my feelings to all of a sudden come in to the you administration of justice. I'm sorry, what? You were literally talking about how, oh, we didn't do anything. Get out of here. This is what you just said. I'm dumbing it down, obviously. Well, okay, but did your parents come here illegally? Yeah. Okay, they're criminals, and they should okay. go back to the country of origin. But they contribute to society. I don't. They pick up. I'm they sure work a lot of day. criminals. Okay, they might rob they work, a store and pay they work, their they taxes. Pick, they get your food. Okay, but did, fast food, let me ask you a question. They drive your kids to school. When, when they came, Is that not contributing? what's their country of origin? My mom's from Mexico. My dad's from Syria. From Syria. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, Got it. Don't talk about did, that. Did he come here illegally too? Not him. Just my mom. Okay, I only it. live with my mom. So. so that's that's fair. So when she came here, did she know she was breaking the law? She was like, I think, seventeen. So yeah. Did she know? She probably know. Okay. Therefore, you should go back to your country of origin. If you knew that you were invading somebody's home, I don't have sympathy for you. You're an invader. You broke into our country. But, so I don't care if you're contributing. I don't care if you're this wonderful dreamer in this great story. Either you have the law or you don't. And if your position is to repeal that law, then make that case. If you think it should be legal to be able to waltz into somebody's country, then fine. There should be no exceptions to the administration of border law. You know who, who, you know who agrees? Mexico. If I go into Mexico without papers, they'll deport me back to America. Try to try to land in Cabo without your passport. They'll let you in. I've been no, they won't. Of times. No, they won't. Really? I just walked through. It, no, you. I landed in Cabo six months ago without with somebody without a passport. They didn't let them into the country. There are stricter borders to go into Mexico. That is a to, lie. No. I don't know what border you've been through, but to go into Mexico is literally you just walk in. You drive in. You, you drive to it's Cabo. It's really fast. Oh. You know, you, you know where back to you know where America. Cabo wow. is on the southern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. How do you drive? So you're in? talking about all of Mexico. You um, can't make the argument and talk about the southern border. Southern border when you're talking about. A part of Mexico. If you take say that argument, if I illegally thing. domiciled myself in Mexico City and I announced I was illegal, what would the Mexican government do? Who's announcing they're illegal? You just announced your mom is here illegally. Yeah, because you asked. <laughs> no, you you said you you, you you declared yourself. I'm a dreamer. I was born here. My so I implied your mom was okay. here illegally, right? Yeah. And you might not like to hear it, but your mom's a criminal. Okay. And every day she stayed here is no different than squatting. You're squatting in America. You're, you are you don't get squatters rights in this country just okay. because you have a nice story and we feel sorry for you again your, your mom contributes a lot right then she can contribute back in Mexico okay she can go build a beautiful business and get a job or you know go to here she already is, but she, the point is that she wasn't welcome here. She wasn't invited. She cut in line. She took the place of other legal immigrants from across the world that have to wait decades to come into here. She wanted it more, so she cut in line under this mass sympathy campaign, and we're supposed to, like, feel sorry for her? Like, go back to Monterey. Okay. So, do, you, do you think we should get rid of the law that says you can't come into a country illegally? Should we just get rid of that law? Very interesting. More honest opinion? Love this. Yeah. I would say sure. no. S -s -s no, no we, we, no, we shouldn't get rid of it. No. Okay, I agree. So then when should we enforce it? What? When should we enforce wow. it? Mm. 
I don't know. Okay, be, and you know the reason, and I, 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 I respect the intellectual honesty, because if you said we shouldn't enforce it all the time, then you know it would apply to your yeah. mom. But but uh, look, you're a winner of all this. You get to be in the greatest country in the history of the world, right? No, I respect it. I love being American. Yes, and so great. Okay, and we have birthright citizenship. You have a U.S. passport, I assume, right? You cannot have a sustainable country if you do not have control of who comes into your country with no sort of standards, okay. no sort of process. It's a big mystery. Secondly, on top of that, we have it on the books. You shall not trespass across the U.S. southern border. It is literally a felony. Uh. They want to make it a misdemeanor. So if we repeal that law, that's a position of some people. No, no border policy whatsoever. Okay. No. Thank you. <laughs> Thank wow. you. Appreciate Thank you it. Your time. God bless. Next question. Thank you. Mind this is mind-blowing. Actually blew my mind. Guys, if you watch this one, drop in the comments, let me know what you think about this particular word. And for you watching to this very moment, like I appreciate you. I don't take a lot for granted. No, 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 no. So thank you and do well to hit the like button, subscribe if you're yet to subscribe, and also drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this particular one. And for all our returning subscribers, thank you for always coming back. I don't know right about this particular one. All right, belong to the rightful content creator of this group piece of art. I don't intend to infringe on the copyrighted materials. So thank you and see you in the next one. Do where to stay put, stay safe, and stay subscribed. Peace. Bye for now.